everybody! Today I'm going to do a quick video about starting the Rorkosigan Saga by Lois McMaster Bujold. Whenever I talk about reading a Rorkosigan book, I usually get a couple of questions about what's a good place to start in the series, do you need to read it in internal chronological order or in publication order, and I have answers, so I will just tell you in this video. As far as internal chronological order versus publication order, I am very biased here. Number one, I read all series in internal chronological order unless the author specifically recommends something else that is more helpful to the reader. And I haven't read the Vorkoskin Saga in publication order, so I have nothing to compare my experience to. All I can tell you is that Bujold herself recommends reading the books in chronological order, not in publication order. There is a list on Goodreads and a list on Wikipedia, I believe, which is actually her suggested recommended reading order, and I will link that. From my own experience reading the Rokoskin Saga in internal order, I can say that I think my enjoyment of the series and my understanding of a lot of events is greatly enhanced by knowing all the previous events. There are a lot of there's a lot of character development, especially for the character of Miles. He begins with his first book, he's 17, and in the later books he's in his 30s, and he goes through some massive changes and major life events during the series. And I think that you lose a lot of that sense of how far he's come if you just jump into the, the end of the series or if you read things out of order. Where should you start? There are, I think, three places to start. The first place you can start, and where I started, is in very strict internal chronological order with Falling Free. This book has nothing to do with the later Vorkosigan books. It's set 200 years prior to the other books in the series and doesn't share any of the characters. It introduces you to the Quadis, who are genetically engineered people. They are engineered to have more arms instead of legs so that they can work better in zero gravity, but the corporation that makes them basically makes them obsolete because artificial gravity is introduced at the beginning of the story and the Quadis there's no use for them anymore. They're basically owned by the corporation that designed them, and they don't like this. They, they are people, and they want to be out from under the thumb of the corporation. And they team up with a man named Leo. He is a non-destructive testing engineer who comes to the station to teach the Quadis his skills. And he believes as well that the Quadis shouldn't have to basically be the slaves of the corporation, and he helps them escape. I personally loved the story as just a standalone story by Bujold. It was really fantastic, but you don't need to read it first. If it doesn't sound interesting to you, if you don't care about the technicalities and you want to get straight into the Vorkosigan family, you can skip it. The Quadis themselves don't reappear in the story, in the series, until I swear like book 13, 14, or 15. And even then, everything that you need to know is recapped in those books. This is just if you like the story, read it. If you want to start with the Vorkosigan series proper and skip Falling Free, then the place that I would actually recommend that most people start reading is with Shards of Honor and Barayar. These two books actually go together. They're basically the first half and the second half of the same story. And this is the story of how Miles Vorkosigan's parents met, fell in love, got married, and then had Miles. There is a great introduction to Bahrain society, which is where Miles' father is from, and Cordelia, his mother, is from Beta Colony, and her perspective on Bahrain gives you insight into, I think, Miles' psychological makeup later in the story. Once again, I don't think you absolutely have to read these stories if you don't want to. If you want to get to Miles' stories, you could skip these. The reason why I recommend people start with these, though, is that other than the fact that they are great stories, it gives you a ton of background info to fall back on later in the books. Otherwise, when Errol and Cordelia show up, you don't really know that much about them. I think it enhances your enjoyment of secondary characters to know what they are like as people, to know their story. Barayar, the second book in the sort of duology, also gives you the first-hand account of the poisoning in utero that destroyed Miles's body. The story is recapped later in Miles's life, and it's part of as part of the driving force of why he behaves the way he does, his incredible urge to prove himself physically and mentally, he has to prove to Barre and society that even though he's damaged and he looks like a mutant, he's just as capable as other people. And there's, I think, an emotional impact of reading the story from his parents' perspective about almost losing their child and what they go through 
to save him if you decide you don't want to read about the love story between Errol and Cordelia and how they had their son, then you can jump straight into the Miles books beginning with Warrior's Apprentice. This is the first Miles book when he is 17 and on his first military assignment. And uh, this is also the introduction of his alternate persona, Admiral Naismith, which kicks off a lot of the other stories. It is a good place to jump in if you don't care about the three previous books. But like I said, I really think that people should read Shards of Honor and Barayar first to get a better idea of Miles's family situation and the history of Barayar that he is born into. But this would be a good place to start with Miles. If you found that you didn't enjoy Shards of Honor, you didn't want to read Barayar, just jump ahead to this one. That's perfectly fine. So those are my thoughts on starting the Vorkosigan saga. If you have any opinions that you want to share with people about reading the series, please comment down below. Especially if you have read the series in publication order and not in internal chronological order, I would love to know how you think that compares to reading it the way that I did and that I recommend other people read it. I hope this was helpful to you guys. Thank you very much for watching and I will talk to you guys again later. Bye.